uh, and that's our beginner class, that's our live beginner class on here. Um, so anyway, um, for those of you who are cool with that, uh, I just want to give a quick disclaimer, spray paint is dangerous. If it's like a one-time thing, like you don't plan on doing this more than once, I think you're fine without the respirator, just paint outside. Uh, but you should get some disposable gloves, uh, and if it is going to become a recurring hobby for you, definitely pick up a paint respirator. The only one I'll ever recommend is 3M, alright? Now that we got all that out of the way, I don't really know exactly, as always, I'm going to wing it here. I do know I want like a giant moon or like planet sort of thing, and I know we, I kind of want to do some northern lights maybe. Um, but I feel like a normal moon and like a whole winter thing would be kind of boring. So, and I don't have tape on this, i got to keep that in mind. We're going to go with it anyway, we're just going to go with our, our, our butt here. I'm going to go ahead and place that planet central down exactly where we can see our planet going. Let me just move some shit out of the way. And you guys are sideways. I see that you guys are sideways. Uh, and that's because we're painting hot dog style today. So I can't really see the chat. Um, but any questions afterward I will answer before I leave. So anyway, let's go ahead and get a dark paint and just outline this. We know exactly where this is going to be going. Right about there. And I don't, I want this to be colorful and I want it to be fun. So let's grab some nice colors. Purple sounds really nice. Let's go ahead and just throw some light purple in here. And you know what? If we're going to do mountains and stuff, I'll make the mountains purple as well. So we'll go ahead and place that color there. First layer is so important. When you're going to be doing some of these techniques that involves lifting paint or creating some sort of texture, the first layer is the most important. So if you want these mountains to be like purple, that's the color that we got to place first. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Whoops. Little thingy is coming off. Place a little bit of dark blue right on top of that because you can layer. You can layer some colors on top of each other. Now let's just go curveball here. And let's go ahead and throw some yellow in here. And here's a technique that I found from Sketch Art. Uh, he's really big on YouTube. Makes really good stuff. We're just going to keep spraying onto the fingertip here to get these big like drips and drops downwards. Maybe give a few flicks in there as well. Just feels right. Alright. How about we go ahead and throw some red in here. I'm not even going to think about colors making sense or anything like that because it's nonsense. And we'll go with like this standard like, classic technique here. So we're going to go ahead and top this off with some sort of neutral. I think we might actually do all the neutral. Well, well, we'll do white up here, right? And we'll go ahead and like fade it down with some gray. And then some black over here in the corner. And this is also going to go ahead and reflect our shading and our highlighting as well. I'm thinking we're going to have the highlighting at the top left there. And shading on the opposite side. That looks pretty great. And now we're going to need some clear coats to make sure that this paint is still wet. It looks like I don't have a can of that here. Let me get a new one. Oh. Get a new can of clear coat. And we're just going to go ahead and re wet this paint to make sure this paint actually comes up. Now, I don't think we have to crumple this, but we'll do it anyway because it feels right. We're just going to place, swipe, and lift. This is just the classic planet technique, and I love that. I really love that. That's going to look amazing once it's all said and done. That's going to look awesome. All right? So we see we have a lot of that purple in there, some of that red, a lot of that yellow that looks dope. We're just going to go ahead and shade and highlight right now. Remember, smiley faces. So that's all that this is. So we're going to hold our can pretty far away. you got to find your distance. That's all that this is about. We're going to find our distance and just spray like a smiley face around the outside of our planet. Let the overspray do most of the work right there. And then we're going to go to the opposite side and make smiley faces with black. Same thing. We kind of found our distance. Right? And we're just kind of working our way in with some smiley faces. Just like that. When I talk about finding our distance, just for a quick explanation, if you hold your can too close, that's no good. That's way too solid. So pull it back until you get that nice faded type of look. Everyone's distance is going to be a little bit different. Right? So here we go. If you want the best results, you should let the paint dry. However, we don't really do that. And this is a bit awkward because I don't have the handle. We're going to hope that worked. It was, it was just weird. Okay. So let's go ahead and throw, like I said, I want this to be really colorful. So how about... We go ahead and we give it, instead of a black base, we give it a dark blue base for this guy. And I'll worry about the, the sides of the canvas later. And I'm just 
I'm going to cover everything up right here. And we'll go ahead and we'll add a bunch of colors. That's good enough. Okay. So how about we add a bit of a lighter blue here. If we can get enough out of this can. Now when you're going ahead, the base is one thing, right? Because we go ahead and we, we, we cover most of the canvas with the base, which is our dark blue here. But when we're adding more colors to that, that's when you really want to pull back this can and just kind of fade other colors in here. Right? And just like that. And you know what? I like the idea of kind of going back to like this red and then yellow, maybe a little bit of orange in there as well. And I'm trying to get around that planet something really nice. I want those lines to be as crisp and clean as possible. Oh. My orange can is almost gone, which means it's probably going to sputter a lot. So I'm not going to take that chance. I'm just going to add some yellow in there as well. Also remember, we're going to do like a whole northern lights thing. So we don't have to do too much here. So let's go ahead and add some stars here. And there's a couple of things that we can do. So you can't really see it because this can is all like gucked up with dust and spray paint and all that. But this is hologram glitter. Uh, by Montana. It's one of their effects cans. Let me give that a quick shake. This is great for like a starry night sort of thing. We are still going to do our standard like flicking technique. Just to add those nicer stars, like those thicker, just like white stars. But this glitter is amazing. Spray some white on the finger. We flick to the side first a few times, get those big nasty blobs off, and then we flick onto our canvas. Right? You just want to get them big nasty blobs off first. And we really don't need to do that much. But that looks, this looks really good so far. Alright, now since I don't have a handle, what I'm going to try to do is take my palette knife and just lift this up. And you know what? That works. It works. That planet looks awesome. However, I want to give it like an atmosphere sort of thing. Because we did get, let me put this back real quick. We did kind of get the Ring of Doom, the Ring of Despair, right? Where, since we don't let the paint dry, and it's cold out, especially when it's cold out, the when it's colder, the paint takes longer to dry, right? But when we lifted up that stencil, it took a layer of that white with it, leaving a mark right there. That's disgusting. I usually don't mind it down here at the shading. I don't know why. But when it comes to my highlighting, I, I want to fix it, right? Like, I want to fix it. Here we go. Trash. This is the trash that came on the canvas. What I'm going to do tear myself off a little piece, right? You can use some scrap poster as well, okay? And I always recommend, I have a giant bin over to my left of just scrap poster. These are paintings that maybe didn't work out, or sometimes I buy poster boards and they have like little tears in them and I can't really make paintings and like sell them to people like that. So I throw them in a bin, that's my scrap poster, okay? But flat side, what we're gonna do here, grab some white. We're gonna hover. You see, I'm not placing it completely on the canvas, we're hovering just right above our canvas. And we're going to spray some white onto this tool, and it's going to go ahead and redirect the line down. Now you see I'm curving it, so it aligns to the curvature of this planet over here. And it's going to add a nice glow. It's also going to cover up any of the ring of despair that I don't like. Alright, and we can just bring that all the way around. Really going to make this planet just look ten times better. I think we can come down a little bit more right here. So there we go. That planet looks a hundred times better. This planet, overall this painting is looking really good so far. Alright, so. For the Northern Lights, I never do this because I think paint is mostly a preference, like brand of paint. However, in my experience, the best paints for the Northern Lights are the fluorescent colors within Montana Gold. So Montana Gold as a line, like as a brand, they're not all fluorescents. However, they have some in there that are fluorescents, and that's what I recommend here. So I'll tell you the names of them. We're going to use Flame Blue, which is their fluorescent blue. We're going to use Acid Green, which is their fluorescent green. And we're also going to use Disco White, which is their fluorescent white. Okay, and how we're going to do this, same piece of trash right here that we just used. What I'm going to do is tear it again in half. Oh, and there's like either my hair, either I'm shedding or my dog shedding. So there's like hair everywhere. But we're going to go ahead and just tear this and make it as uneven as you want. Right, you can go ahead and shape it out. So maybe you want like a kind of a curve right here. Let's go ahead and kind of tear it that way, just like that. And we can use either piece. Right, but you just want sort of like these natural, torn, little scrap pieces, right? Now this is how we usually make clouds, except this time, if we do the clouds, we usually have it like this way. We're gonna flip it around this way, so it's basically gonna be upside down. We're gonna take some of that disco white, and we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna hover. Once again, we're not placing it on the paint, because if it's placed on the paint, uh, it's gonna leave a mark if the paint's still wet, which it most certainly is. So spray off to the side first. This white looks really good. 
and I'm just gonna go ahead and spray basically 50-50 between the tool and the painting uh, and the canvas here. We're gonna go ahead and get a line down. Right? We're just gonna go ahead and work our way up. Work your way up wherever you can see these northern lights kind of going. Right? Maybe we're gonna go ahead like this. And how about we curve? Whoops. It's a bit windy. I have stuff all around. Alright. Go ahead and like kind of curve it upwards like this. And you know what? Let's make a couple of more. A couple more lines. How about we make one like right here? And we'll have it end right there. And then how about we make a few more right here? Now what we're gonna do, you can see uh, the one side. You know, let's bring this in front of the planet a little bit. We don't want to. We don't want it to look like we're scared. So in front of our planet. Now we're actually just going to flip this around to the flat side, and we're going to hold this basically straight up. Okay. And once again, we're still hovering. And we're going to spray once again the white right here on the tool. It's going to redirect, kind of like a straight line down. And we're going to go ahead and give our northern lights the line thingies. You know, you know the thingies that I'm talking about. The line thingies. Right. And I'm basically, what I'm aiming for, and some, they're not perfect, spray paint art never is, okay? So don't worry too much about it, but we're basically aiming to have those lines, those up and down lines start right here at what I call the root, the root of the northern lights. It's probably, I know it's not the right term, but I don't ever use the correct terms for things, so. And we can go back and we can add more later. But this is looking really good so far. Now we're going to use the same tool, but this time we're going to go ahead and pull out, actually we don't really need to use the tool here unless you're worried about like your free handing. If your free handing's not there, maybe you want to use the tool right here. But what I'm going to do is just take this flame blue, so fluorescent blue, and I'm just going to go ahead and spray that blue right over these northern lights. I'm not trying to overtake the white. Now you have to understand Montana Gold really soft. It's really soft, so you don't really have to worry about finding your distance here. So it looks pretty good. I'm just kind of spraying that blue down. So it almost comes out transparent. All right, now we're gonna go back to this tool. And whoops, you wanna make sure that you wipe these tools off, right? Because paint will start building up and it'll start dripping and it's disgusting. Anyway, let's go ahead and take our acid green now. And this time we're gonna go same exact thing. We're gonna follow the same exact route that we took before, except this time we're gonna get really close to it, right? We don't wanna overtake the blue at all. We just wanna go right under that blue, right? So right here looks about right. And I'm basically maybe like 40, 60 between the tool and my canvas, and I'm just spraying down this acid green. Can you use other fluorescents? Of course you can. I imagine someone is probably wondering that. However, this is Montana Gold, or Montana in general has the best fluorescent in my, in my experience. So that's why I use them. I'm not usually one to tell people what brand to pick, but in my experience, their fluorescents just look really good. Okay, I'm starting to think it's my dog. That is, one of my dogs is shedding really bad. Oh, you know what it is? I'm wiping my tool off on my pants. Guaranteed you, I have a cat that likes to sit on my laundry. That's probably what it is. All right, anyway, let's go back in here with that fluorescent green. Going right underneath that flame blue, right over all of this white that we made. All right, so now we have this really nice glow. We're not done yet. We're going to go over it one more time, right? But this time we're going to get a lot closer to the root, the bottom of the, the northern lights here, but back again with the white, basically. So we're just going to kind of re-highlight, re-add that little glow. All right, so let's just go over that. And when you're getting really close like this, what I'm doing is I'm basically just spraying the tool, not spraying the canvas much, and I'm holding the can really close, right? And we're doing small little bursts, small little bursts of paint. Oops starting to sputter a little bit. Eh, it's fine. Right, we need to, we don't need to do too much white here. Just want to go right underneath that green again. Just add that little highlight. Just like that. Go in one more time right there. And we can even go in, if you want to go ahead and make those lines again, we can go in and kind of do those lines again. Remember, we're just holding it up and down. We're spraying the tool completely with this fluorescent white. It's looking good, looking great. I don't think we need to do too much. 
think there just might be a couple spots that look pretty bad. All right, now that's it for the Northern Lights. I'm gonna throw that tool away, put this back. Now one thing about Montana Gold, a lot of overspray, like it leaves a lot of dust and stuff. So what you can do, I could wait until the end, but just to show you, go ahead and take some clear coat. And the clear coat will actually clear up a lot of that overspray and give it that nice glossy finish. Right, it'll make your Northern Lights look a, lot, look a lot better. So I know a lot of people are like, there's way too much overspray. Just wait a minute. Okay, do your thing. Go ahead and throw the clear coat down and you'll be good. And actually we're gonna need clear coat anyway because we're about to do the mountains right here. So let's go ahead and do this mountain technique. We have been sitting here for a while so it might not work as good as uh, we're hoping. That's okay because we can just go ahead and throw in another technique. But we're gonna throw some clear coat down right there. We're gonna grab some magazine. Magazine page, you can also use newspaper. It's whatever, it's about whatever's convenient. All right, I'm just gonna fold it in half to give it a little bit more strength. All right, very simple. My right hand is my dominant hand, so I'm gonna go ahead and grip the bottom of the page, and then using my left hand, just gonna fold it over my fingers, right? And the whole thing here is my dominant hand is gonna guide this page along to make these mountains, very simple, right? And these, these are looking really good so far, really good. So we go have that peak, and we're just gonna hand drag this down. I think we need to use maybe a little bit more clear coat. All right, I'm just gonna fold that in half one more time. And just basically, it's almost just my middle finger, just kind of going in there, carving out these mountains, right? And we're making this texture. And I'll go across the whole thing. Why? Because it feels right. Just feels right. So there we go. We have some cute little mountains. They're going to be like more in the distant mountains. So with that, we're going to go ahead and add some sort of separator, right? You're going to need to, to make layers in your painting, you need to add a separator. So let's go ahead and add like a mist. Or maybe some clouds. I'm thinking maybe we'll just go with a mist instead of like straight up like shaped clouds. Um, but yeah, let's go for it. Okay, so let me throw that away. Now how about we go with I'm thinking since so we already have like a lot of this green and this white, how about we take that acid green again and go ahead and just spray right under these mountains. Give it a nice green mist and then we'll put white right under it. And we can even go with the, the disco white, right? The fluorescent white. We're just gonna go right under that. There we go, we have our separator. Looks really cool. All right, now let's see if we have what we need here or if we gotta make more tools. So it looks like we do. Looks like we got what we need. But this is synthetic sponge, right? Or if you go to like Home Depot or Lowe's, it's just called all-purpose sponge or maybe grouting sponge. That's what this is. Um, it's like a foamy type material. It's just called all-purpose sponge or maybe grouting sponge. That's what this is. Um, it's like a foamy type material. It has some sort of sharper side to it. So this top side here, and I know it's a little difficult to see, but that top side there, sponge. I will show you how to cut, how to cut sponge. All right, but we're gonna take that sharp side, and what I'm gonna do here is just use my pointer finger and pull it back, sponge. I will show you how to cut, how to cut sponge. All right, but we're gonna take that sharp side, and what I'm gonna do here is just use my pointer finger and pull it back. I'm gonna make that little distant tree line. Right. So here we sharp, sharp. Okay. Hold on, I'll give it a minute if we're freezing up. That sucks. It seems to happen every every so often. I'm gonna trust that we're back. You're good? Okay, we're good. Okay, so here we go. Synthetic sponge, we have that sharper side that I was talking about. I yeah, okay, so let me let me show you what this synthetic sponge actually is. So I actually have it up here. They come in large chunks like this, right? And this one's a more like softer one. Uh, but I get mine on Amazon. Like I said, some people call it like grouting sponge and I just cut off small pieces. I take these cheap ass scissors, I cut off some small pieces. The only thing I ever look for is that it has a sharper side like that, right there at the top. Now, if they don't have a sharper side, don't throw it away. You see, I have one down here, no sharp side to it whatsoever, but we can use this still for our nature painting. So don't ever throw pieces away Okay, just cut off some pieces. The ones that have the sharper sides to them, put in, put them in like one pile. So that's what I usually do here. I'll have my sharp ones in one pile, my not sharp ones in the other pile, just to make my life easier. And at the end of the class, if you guys, I don't know why this is confusing as to you guys, some people ask me how I cut them, but I will show you guys how to cut them at the end of the class. So here we go. All I'm doing is taking my pointer finger, right? And I'm pulling back the top of the sponge. We're gonna go ahead and load up the sponge with the blue. And this is very simple. 
right? Little pressure, always start with the least amount of pressure possible. And we're just gonna tap our way up. And you see, because we, we have this bit pulled back, that's what's giving us that point up there because less of the sponge up there is making contact, right? So there we go. And you just wanna go ahead and tap your way across the entire thing. That's how we're gonna get our tree line, all right? Once you get the hang of it, you'll really be able to knock these, whoops, you guys almost fell. Once you guys get the hang of it though, you'll be able to knock them out really easy. Okay, whoops, so here we go. Let's go across, we don't need to go across the whole thing. How about we go to like here and then maybe we'll do another tree line or maybe we'll just kind of like fast forward. Maybe we'll do like a little lake or something. Let's see, let's see. Let's just kind of go with it and we'll see how we feel in a minute. What we also want to do here, yeah, I think that's good right there. What we also want to do here is give it a nice little cushion as well. So you can go ahead and just keep tapping your sponge downwards, or if you're lazy like me and you have your handling down, just kind of freehand some of that glue in there. All right, just give it a little bit of a cushion for you to work with. All right, so this is looking really good so far. I'm thinking. We could just do like another tree line and just have it be like a forest type thing, but I am I'm a I'm an absolute I'm not a, I'm not sure I'm allowed to say that word. I I really like waterfalls and lakes and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna need some sort of straight edge. If you don't have an actual straight edge, find some trash. Remember, scrap poster is your best friend. Okay, but for me, I have this giant straight edge thingy majiggy. I don't even know where I I think I got this from Amazon. I think this is Amazon's. We're just gonna go ahead and block this off down here. And let's go ahead and throw our colors down. Now I think, actually what I wanna do here, I'm just gonna take all these colors that we kind of used up here. So we have some like red, yellow, all, all that nonsense up there. So let's just start with some yellow and I'll put that like kind of under our planet. Throw some of that purple in there as well. Not really worrying too much about anything. Maybe a little bit of that red. Uh, okay, now let's go ahead I'm, I'm, I'll try to tilt this so you can actually see. So let's go ahead and fill up some blue. Just kind of replicating all the colors that are in the sky. And we'll go ahead and throw some of that neon green in there as well, although I'm not sure it'll really come up. Okay, just like that. And I'm actually gonna let this sit here for a second before we go on and we, we move on to the next thing. In the meantime, let's go ahead and make some clouds here. Right, right under at least some, some sort of mist right under our trees. Um, and you know what, we'll add a bunch of other like close up trees and stuff like that to kind of fill in this gap over here, but we won't worry about that right now. Let's go ahead and take, we made that little Northern Lights tool earlier. This is just a piece of scrap. It's trash is what it is, but it's like scrap poster. And I tore off a piece, right? So we have that natural tear right here. It's exactly what we're gonna use. We're gonna take some white and we can just use normal white here. And I'm just gonna hold, hold this right above my canvas. I'm hovering maybe like a centimeter above the thing and we're just gonna spray down. Now, when you want something really small and like controlled, what you wanna do is basically just spray all of your paint onto the tool. Now, if you want them to be thicker and a little bit more wild, I guess, I don't know if that's the correct word to, to say for art, but then you would go ahead and, and, and put more of that paint on the canvas instead. But we're just gonna go ahead and spray down these little clouds over here and we'll, we'll, we'll just extend it all the way over here because why not, right? Why not? Okay. You know what, in the meantime, because I still want to let this sit for maybe just a few more seconds, but while we wait, how about we go back to the sky up here and we add some more stuff. So we could add, I was really thinking like comets, really liking the idea of comets. Four comets, if I could find something. Here we go. I'm just going to grab more scrap poster here. I can't really, it's just literally trash. It's what it is, trash. And we're just gonna tear off another piece of that that has a flat side to it. So something like that will hopefully work. All right, and I'll show you exactly how to make this tool. What we're gonna do, flat side here, we're just gonna kind of fold it. We're not gonna crease it, right? See, we just kind of have that bend. I'm gonna pinch it down a little bit so we have that opening right there, down there. Now, if you want your comments to be open towards the end, you focus your pressure towards the bend. Focus your finger pressure there. I like to have mine closed. 
So I focus my finger pressure in the back. I'm just gonna flip this over, right? And we're gonna treat this like a funnel. We're gonna spray some white on the inside here. Not really trying to spray for the hole down there, like for the opening. I'm just kind of just spraying on the inside here, and it'll go ahead and redirect all that white down. Okay. So I want to pin. I want these to be a little smaller. So let me just pinch it down a little bit more, and let's see what they look like. It's gonna be the same concept. Okay, I kind of kind of like these. I like them. All right. I always do them off to the side first, to just kind of see what's going on. But we're hovering, and I'm spraying white on the inside. That's it. That is it. So here we go. We have some little comments in there. And I'll give you guys a close-up in a minute. Let's get some more. How about up there in this corner? And remember, paint will start building up in here, so you might have to wipe off the tool. But we're, we seem to be fine. Right, just like that. It looks great. We have some comments now. Oops, let me just get you guys a little closer. Right? We have some there in the planet. Kind of over there. Really cool. I like it. We might add more a little bit later, but let's go back to this water. Right, so now I want you to go ahead and block this off. Same exact spot again with your straight edge. Now I want you to go ahead and take... I I'm just going to take black, but any sort of dark color would usually work. However, just keep in mind, we already used dark blue here. Okay, so keep that in mind. Keep, keep that in mind. So we're going to pick like another dark color other than just black. Keep in mind what you already have down here. We're just going to cover this all up with black. All of it. Just like that. And it doesn't have to be 100% covered. Don't worry about that. Now we're going to go ahead and get more trash. And we'll just use this. Trash. Just going to kind of tear this piece off. Just like that. Make sure it has a flat side to it. That's all you really got to worry about. All right, and what we're gonna do, hold on, let me make sure you guys are like in frame. Clear coat, right? And when I when I talk about clear coat, this is what I use, right? This is gonna re-wet the paint for us, and we're gonna have to use a lot of it. We're just gonna re-wet all of this black, spray all of this black. And now, I'll bet you guys out of the booster seat for another view, but we're gonna take this flat bit, we're gonna place it down at the top here, and we're just gonna swipe back and forth and kind of work our way down, right? We're just gonna swipe back and forth, work our way down. You're just squiggling. You're just squiggling back and forth. That's all that we're doing here. All right. So let me get you guys out of the booster seat. Or you know what? Let me try because you kind of need two hands for this. There's going to be turbulence. I'm sorry, but there's going to be turbulence. There's nothing I can do about it. Turbulence. Okay. But I want to get you guys a better view of what's actually kind of happening here. If my booster seat would work. There we go. So maybe we can get a better view. Maybe we can get, maybe, maybe, I don't know. We'll see. So clear coat. All right, and I'm just taking this flat side and you see I'm not completely straight up and down, right? We kind of have it at this angle here and we're just kind of scraping paint away, right? Swiping back and forth, back and forth, just kind of working our way down here. And all those colors that we did, that's what's showing up right here. This is another example of the first layer being really important. A lot of clear coat. This is one of the, I think, best looking techniques for water. It's not the most fun, but it's one of the best looking. So there we go. We have our water, and it looks like it just looks rough, right? It doesn't look like a calm lake. It looks like it has waves, and it looks like there's shadows in there without actually putting in all the effort of shadows. So it's really nice. It's a really nice thing to learn. Okay, so back up. You. There we go. Make sure you guys are in there. This looks really good so far. Okay. And then one thing I like to do as well is I'll take my straight edge. I'll go back to the water line up here, the horizon. And I either, you can use black, which looks more realistic. However, I think it looks more boring and I think it just dulls your painting. But I'll go ahead and take some white. And what I'm going to do, just put this back up here. And I'm just going to spray white onto the tool. Onto the tool, not onto the canvas. And it's going to go ahead and give it a nice white highlight up there at the top. Love it. I love it. Okay. So maybe we'll go ahead and do waterfalls here. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to... Remember, it's all about feeling good, right? No, we don't think, okay? At least I don't like thinking. So here's what I'm going to do. You can spray black off to the side. However, I'm just going to spray it directly onto my fingers like that. 
super incredible, amazing techniques. Keep, j don't blink, okay? We spray some black on the fingertips and we just swipe. Just swipe in some little pockets of land, wherever it feels right, just swipe it in, swipe it in. We're gonna swipe in some little pockets of land. We're also gonna head to head and finger paint some land in here. So let's say that we want a little drop off for a waterfall, because I love waterfalls, I can't help myself. We're just gonna go ahead and finger paint some black in there because I want that dark background because I really want these waterfalls to pop, right? And remember, think about the dip, right? The dip is where the water is actually pouring out from these rocks, okay? Which means everywhere outside of the dips, we could say a dip is gonna be right here, a waterfall is gonna come right here, well then elevate all of the rocks around it, right? Make it a dip. Because if it's all the same level, well then it's not really a dip anymore, is it? Right, we can go ahead and make this whole thing a dip right here. And I'm just kind of swiping my finger in there. Maybe, actually maybe we'll just do it right there. So we'll have a little tiny waterfall there. In the meantime, let's make more land, maybe like a bit of land right there. Not bad, okay. So let's go ahead and I wanna add, actually, I wanna add some like bigger trees right there. I'm gonna kill my cat. I'm not actually gonna kill my cat. I'm gonna annoy her with a lot of hugs and cuddles later, but she, she gets pet hair all over my clothes. Like, I think she finds joy in just making, finding my laundry, my clean laundry, and just laying all over it. Okay, so there we go. We have some land right here. Now, I'm gonna, you can take anything sharp for this, but what I'm gonna use is just my angled palette knife. And we're gonna use some clear coat, just re-wet the paint here. And we're gonna make, we'll make two pine trees right here. So I'm just gonna use the point of my palette knife, just scrape in a line. And we'll scrape in another line right there. Those look pretty good. Uh, and let's grab that piece of sponge from earlier. All right. And this time we're gonna use that same sharp side, but what we're gonna do is pinch it this way. We're gonna pinch it this way. And I know this can be a bit complicated. Right, but we're gonna, I think we're gonna use black this time. I think we are gonna use black this time. So let's grab something, a little something, something. We're gonna spray black to the side here. Right, like I said, we were taking this sponge, we're just gonna pinch it this way now. And we're gonna go ahead and load it up with that, that black. Right, just like this. I'll get you guys out of the booster seat. And the whole idea of this is as we're gonna tap and we're gonna go in a zigzag pattern and work our way down. Okay, so we just zigzag our way down. But as I go down the tree, I'm gonna open this up a little bit more, more and more as, as we kind of work our way down. All right, so I'll do one tree, just kind of here, and then I'll get you guys out of booster seat to show you. All right, so we're just like down left, down right, down left, down right, and I'm slowly opening up this sponge. And we kind of get like a general shape. Just get the general shapes first, and then go back and fill in any little gaps and add some randomness to it, all right? Maybe we want some branches that go up, you know? I usually just kind of tap through it again, to be completely honest with you, but I mean, there we go. We have a little pine tree. We'll add some little highlights. I'm sorry, for some reason Bixby just thought they were gonna open whatever Bixby thought they were gonna open. Ugh, I was choked on air. Black to the side. All right, here we go. That sponge, we're gonna pinch it this way, like so. Load it up over here, All right? Just tap extremely lightly at the top. We're seeing we're zigzagging our way down. I'm just kind of zigzagging our way down. And as we move down, I'm slowly opening up this sponge. So now we're basically flat, straight. We started like this. Now we like this, okay? And we just zigzag our way down. We have a general shape of the tree, okay? And we're gonna go back and we'll fill in all those little gaps. Maybe we can bring it out a little bit more. like that. Not bad, not bad. And I think I'm actually, let's go back to this technique right here. This one, where I pull back the top. And let's just give it a little a nicer point to the tops of these trees. Boop, boop, boop. Something like that. I don't know. You just gotta mess around with it, I guess. But now we have some little pine trees. All right, and I think they do look pretty good the way that they are. And for a highlight, for a highlight, do we do green or we do, I think I'm kind of like the blue. 
I like the idea of some blue, so let's try to get that dark blue in here. I'm just gonna flip this over so I get a clean size. And let's spray some dark blue down. Now I'm gonna use the same sponge, same sponge that already has all that black on it. Uh, because I don't want this to be too bright, right? But it's gonna be the same exact thing here. We're gonna use a little pressure, tap back and forth. But we're going to tap in less spots, less pressure, because we don't want to overtake the black. We just want to add to it, right? And I think this might be a little too dark. So we might actually switch it up and go something a little lighter on top of it. But, I mean, it's, it's not bad. It is a faint little highlight in there. I don't know if you guys can actually see it. But I think maybe some teal. I think I might want to try to throw just a little bit of teal in there. I feel like I never use teal. And it's sad, because teal is a dope color. And... I don't know. I'm going to use it. So I'm going to spray some teal to the side now. That cat needs to go in the trash. All right. So here we go. We're going to use the same sponge again. Blow it up with that teal. And this time we're going to tap. We'll just tap in less spots again. Oh, it's really dark still. But you know what? I like it. I like it. All right. Just really quick. Kind of going over this. I would like that. I really like that teal. That's nice. Maybe we'll kind of make some stuff down here. I don't know. There we go. I really like that, though. Okay. So, let's go ahead and do... How about we make some more bushes over here? We won't make, like, trees, but we'll make bushes. So, let's grab our black. And I'm just going to spray it directly on the sponge. You don't have to spray it at the side. You can spray it onto your sponge as well. Now, when it comes to, like, no, uh, plant life, not trees, there are no rules with this. Hold your sponge however you want. You can hold it like this. You can hold it straight up. You can do whatever. Okay, but just kind of tap. Right, just kind of get some plants in there, right? Just a little something, something. Just kind of tap some stuff in there, and let's do the same exact thing. Let's go ahead and throw those highlights in there. Let's get that dark blue. Let's throw that dark blue to the side. Remember, you're not going to overtake the black. You just want to add to it. Add little highlights up there, right? We're just kind of following the same exact flow. Now let's go ahead and grab some of that teal in there as well. And throw some of that teal in there. Right, just like that. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Now what I am gonna do is make sure that my rocks are in front of that, or just the black. There we go. Okay, so now let's do the waterfalls. Let's do our all, all our little white lines and all that good stuff. So here's what I want you to do. You can. I want you to grab another piece of scrap. All right, I want you to grab another piece of scrap. But you can see there's like a natural this isn't a completely straight flat side it's like a naturally it's a torn side that's the side that we're going to be using if you can't get something like this which i can't even fucking tell you how i do it okay i just somehow do it you can use a flat side as well okay but i'm just going to go ahead and tear off a little piece actually we'll get a few different size pieces we'll get a pretty chunky one like that we'll get we'll make a smaller one like that and you know fuck it we'll just keep whatever's left over right so we have three sizes here to work with. Now, off to the side, we'll say this is our off to the side tool. Let's grab some white. Spray some white to the side. I know there's some paint left in here. In this economy, we use every glass drop. Here we go, we'll have some white. I want you to take your little tool and I want you to dip that in the white. It's very simple. We're just gonna go scrape in some lines and then we're gonna do the waterfalls here. For the lines, you just swipe back and forth. Just swipe in some little white lines. Wherever land meets water, that's a good place to put a little line. Give it a little water line. Go ahead and make some little waves, some little ripples. Go crazy, go wild. Right under here, we'll go ahead and make a whole little line. Right, I'm just swiping along with with the little, the little piece of trash. Right, so there's some land right here. Just go ahead and put a little water line under that. Right, a little white lines, not the illegal kind. All right, now for the waterfalls. Here we go. This is where the good stuff happens. Once again, we're dipping that side in some white. We go to the top of our dips right here. Remember those rocks that we made and we made all those dips? We go to the top and we drag it down. That is it. That's it. My best advice is to full send it. Okay, full send it is the best, best advice that I can give you. Because slow and steady is a bunch of BS. Now if I could actually pick up my tool. There we go. So dip it in some white, just like so. We come over here to the top of our dip, we drag it down, right? And you can go ahead and I, I gave it a, like a little curve up there, but you can go ahead and make them completely flat as well. Like you can make them straight down. So we can just go here, drag it down, 
Remember, just full send it. Just like that, you have our little waterfalls. Come over here, maybe we'll go the other way. Something like that, I like it. I like it. Right, now here we go. We have a lot of good stuff. Now let's make the Swish Splash. Because those look really good. Those look good. We have good waterfalls. We have good waterfalls here. Let me maybe bring you guys down a little. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the Swish Splash. Grab some sort of straight edge. You can grab like an actual thing if you want, but you can just use the trash. Let me move these out of the way. Let me move you guys down here. My thing is like almost off the table. Okay, there we go. So here we go. I'm just going to block off the water here. And I'm just kind of hovering here. We're going to take some white. And the whole idea here, I'm going to start with this spray on the tool. And then I'm just going to kind of flick up. That's what you're going to see here. And we don't have to flick up too much. Because it's not a very big waterfall. And if you want to add more splash to the splish, what you can do is actually just same way we did our stars, right? Spray some white onto the finger, maybe flick to the side just once and then flick some splash to the splish. Just a little something, something. All right, very cool, very cool. Um, and finally, let's just go ahead and add a little bit more plant life, I guess, in here. And we'll add some birds, of course. I love my birdies. So we'll add some birds. And... I think maybe we'll just make some grass and then how about we kind of frame out like really close up like plants and stuff. So let's do that. Here we go. We're going to need some clear coat to re-wet the paint here. But we're just going to add some like maybe some tall grass right here. Spraying some clear coat down. And I'm just using my angled palette knife using the point there. You can use anything sharp. And we're just going to kind of flip up, swipe up, right? Make a bunch of little lines, right? And I, I can get you guys out of the booster seat for that, I guess, as well. We could probably do it for the rest of the painting, to be honest. I know, I got a spray WD-40 on my, my booster seat, it squeaks. But see, we're just kind of flicking up. Right, we can make a bunch of little details like this. Spray paint art doesn't have to be like cheap planets all the time. You can add details, you can make like these really full complete paintings. We can even add like little rocks under it. Right, the small details are what really makes stuff. It's also one of the things, and maybe you guys don't care about selling stuff, but when you guys get to the point where you're selling your artwork, it's also what makes your customers happy. Small little details. They'd like to be able to look at a painting for the hundredth time and be able to find something new in it. Right? Okay. So that looks, we'll just have the little grass there. Now let's go ahead and add a little background to our, to our plants that we're gonna kind of frame out this painting with. We're gonna spray a little mist of white in the corners, maybe a little bit down here. Just so when we give these these plants, this black base, they really pop, right? So let's do that. Spray some black to the side. We're going to grab that sponge that we've been using all painting. And we're almost done here. Just load it up with some black. And this is the crazy part. You don't really have to follow any rules like this one. If you want to fold it like this and just tap, you can kind of make some pretty cool looking plants like that. For me, I like to kind of just hold it straight, right? Just kind of tap. You can even swipe if you want. Right? Swiping looks always a little bit more tropical to me, which I don't think is the vibe here. So we'll keep that like right there. Right? But there's all sorts of things that you can do with this stuff. So, uh, so let's go ahead and just tap everywhere. We can even do... Well, let's do the, let's do the base first. Let's do the base first. So let's get more black before we move on to, I, I was thinking maybe add like a tree branch, but we can do that after. Maybe in front of the waterfall a little bit. Okay. So here we go. We kind of got this black base. We can just darken it up in the corner with like actual black. Look at this, like paint. Right? Maybe a little bit down there. A little bit. All right? Just kind of darken it up. We'll add the highlights, of course, in a minute. But let's do, let's make our fountain pen real quick. And the fountain pen is really easy. I probably have one over here. 
What it is is just some scrap with a flat side and we fold it in half. Like you actually crease it and fold it in half, right? And the whole idea here, right? We're gonna go ahead and spray some black into that crease. I don't wanna put you guys back in the booster seat if I don't have to, right? So, boom, crease, looks good. And then when you tilt it down, what happens is you can kind of draw stuff out with it, right? So this is how we're gonna make our birds. And if we do a tree branch, this is how we're gonna do the tree branch as well, right? You can use a paintbrush if you want. Just remember, spray paint destroys paintbrushes like instantly. So let's go ahead and do like a branch right here, right? And make it jagged. Don't make it like completely straight. So that's not what nature is. That not That's not how nature be. So we'll have some lines connected to the line here. Some lines connected to the lines that are connected to the lines. And we have a little tree branch. Kind of nice, right? Kind of nice. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and throw some birds in here, right? So these are just wonky looking bees. Oops. All right, just like that. Some little birdies. All right, so we just start from the center, arch a wing out. You can arch it out however you want. You can have it go just straight out. And then we go back to the center, just arch a wing out the other way. That's it. Let's go ahead and make one more here. Just like that. Pretty. Now, one thing I like to do as well, especially when the birds are a lot bigger, just go back to the center and kind of pull some black down for a body. All right, so there we go. Some more birds. So this is, this is looking complete. Little tiny things. Whoops. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Anyway. More black. And how about we put some, give some leaves to the tree, right? So we loaded this up with some black right at the tops of these branches. Go ahead and just have a little bit. And they don't have to be like big, full like leaves. Just add a little, little, just a little bit, a little bit of something, something, right? Looks nice. Looks nice. Okay. Um, so let's just go straight for the teal. And I'm just trying to get as much black off of this as we can. But let's go back to the teal. Oh, we need a cap for the teal. Hold on. I have I have caps. Always, if you're going to buy spray paint, especially in this cold weather, always get some backup caps. Always. Because they're going to clog a lot. Whoops. Mm, we'll just put that to the side right now. And we're just going to go ahead and load this up. Remember, we're not overtaking the black, right? We're just adding to it. So just kind of tap, 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 tap. Follow this, try to follow the same flow. Like we kind of went up like this, you know? So just kind of follow, follow the same flow, but we left a lot of black space there. And I actually think that this might even be a little too bold. So I might go over that again. But you don't need to use a whole lot of pressure. You don't need to do too much. All right, we're just adding some of that highlight there. And then for right here as well on these leaves. Fuck yeah, we're going to add a little highlight to those leaves. It doesn't need to be super bold or anything. It just needs to be a little something, something. All right? And you're in my way. Okay. Maybe we'll go this way. A little something, something. All right, a little something, something. Ooh, you know what? I actually have the perfect idea. Let's go ahead and, and just... Whoop. We're not even going to worry about that. So we had, we started with all these fluorescent colors and stuff like that. Let's go, let's finish off the painting down here with those fluorescents as well. So let me go ahead and kind of organize myself a little bit. Okay. So let's go back to, how about we try the flame blue? It's like that transparent blue down here in the corner. I'm just spraying down here in the corner. We're going to add a little mist down here, right? It's a flame blue. I'm going to try to add some of that acid green as well. Instead of just adding white, you know, let's try to add a little, little something, something. Like that acid green right there in the corner. And you know what? I don't even think it needs white. However, I will take that disco white. It's that fluorescent white. Just add a little bit in the corner right there. We'll go in this corner, add a little bit in that corner right there. That looks great. That looks fantastic. Okay. So that is basically it. We're done. Now when it comes to my canvases, which is what this is, I always use triple thick. All right, this stuff is incredible. It's amazing. Give it a good shake, shake. And we're going to finish off this painting by giving it a nice, even layer of this triple thick. Just make sure I got up there. Okay. Wow, this looks really great. This looks really great. And I am going to spray just a little bit more in that corner of just normal clear to re-wet that paint there. Because that, out of my way, booster seat, is where I signed my name. Squiggle. 
Very nice. Very nice.